I'm Robin Ferrari, today's host, and I would like to welcome you to another episode of Let's Talk Film, a film review series for women which allows their contemporary voices to be heard on all types of film releases. We will be reviewing the Danish romantic comedy Love Is All You Need, written by Suzanne Beer and Anders Thomas Jensen, and directed by Suzanne Beer. We are shooting at Two Boots Pizza, pizza pioneers in New York City since 1987. We are here today at their location on Avenue A and 3rd Streets in the East Village. Houston Street, always alive with high energy, is just a few blocks away and offers contrast to the contemporary lifestyle now on view in this area. And Two Boots Pizza, the popular Cajun Italian eatery, has been serving this neighborhood for over 25 years. Let's go inside, grab a slice, and learn a little more. Hadn't hey, Leon. Um, thanks for having us. Thank you for coming. So tell me a little bit about Two Boots. Um, it's Cajun and Italian. Mm -hmm. Can you explain that concept to me and how those two styles mesh? Sure. My parents uh, started Two Boots back in 1987, and they were just lovers of pizza, mm -hmm. and started going down to New Orleans for NCAA basketball games and Mardi Gras mm -hmm. jazz fest, and just fell in love with the culture mm -hmm. and the food. I felt like putting some crawfish on a pizza might be a good idea. They so. kind of fused their two loves of pizza yeah. and New Orleans. Yes. Very cool. Um, and we're standing uh, around some videos, and you mm -hmm. do video rental at Two Boots. We do. Can you explain to me um, that kind of the history of cinema and Two Boots and kind of how those two concepts came together? Sure. My parents were both filmmakers back in the 80s, mm -hmm. ancient history, and uh, they open two boots around the time that they were both making films kind of to support their filmmaking and two boots took off without them expecting it necessarily and they, they've been doing it ever since and also have been making films. Um, we also had a movie theater right around the corner here for many years nice. and that was a way to continue the love of cinema. I right. also make films too so it carries on to the next generation. Excellent, so this is a perfect place to do a film review. Thanks exactly. for having us. Yeah. Um, can you tell me a little bit about the neighborhood around Two Boots and kind of how you fit in the neighborhood. I saw a lot of people dropping off their video rentals, so it seems like you're really connected to the community, and can you just tell us a little bit about that? Exactly. We, we take pride in hopefully being the last video store <laughs> maybe in the world, but especially in the East Village, and uh, it's, it's great for the community. We have kids coming in, you know, seeing, getting exposed to films that they don't necessarily have the chance to now, especially with monolithic Hollywood taking over, right? So. This is a great uh, platform for everyone to come together. And we have a lot of uh, neighborhood filmmakers titles in our oh, collection. Oh, great. Nice. Keep it local a little bit. Exactly. I love we also it. do screenings here for uh, movie previews and music videos, art films, all kinds of things. Yeah. Awesome. Um, I also noticed that the artwork in Two Boots is really distinctive and unique, and it's definitely your own style. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about kind of how that, whose style that is, I guess, and kind of who's, who's done all the hand painting in here and the mosaic, and it's a really lively, exciting place, and I'd love to learn more about the artwork. Very, very keen. Thank you very much. Uh, so much of it is uh, local people as well. It's, local it's artists local will artists. come and paint yep. the windows. Exactly. Wow. Uh, the, the windows and the mosaic tiles, these are local folks, and that's what we try to do is keep the community involved. Mm -hmm. But also, we go out to New Orleans and get some you know, folk art from down there and nice. bring it up to New York and bring that spirit. I love so it. So bring all the worlds together. Excellent. Really unique space. Well, thank at you. Two Boots Pizzeria in the East Village. Leon, thanks so much. Thank you. And now let's meet our panelist. Today I'm here with Justine Harrison. Hi, how are you? Justine is a New York City-based actress. She is currently a lead in the web series Unsung Heroes. She also does sketch comedy with the group Guilty Pleasures. She was a lead in the feature film The Last Intervention, co-starring Hemke Madeira of Weeds. Justine loves European film. Today we'll be reviewing the Danish romantic comedy Love Is All You Need, written by Suzanne Beer and Anders Thomas Jensen, and directed by Suzanne Beer. The film's original title in Danish is The Bald Hairdresser, but transformed into the title Love Is All You Need for the English-speaking market. Why do you think this was necessary, or do you think this was necessary? Honestly, I don't really like either title. I think that, yes, it's better than The Bold Hairdresser, but it's pretty trite and like cliched. 
and it kind of gives you like a feel of a movie. Like when I heard the title, I was like, this is probably just going to be like a sappy, a very typical, yeah, yeah, so you would expect from a romantic comedy, but it wasn't. So I don't know if either title really does the film justice. I think the bald hairdresser is definitely more original and it's sort of more interesting title, but I also don't think it fits the movie either. I think it doesn't encompass um, the, the overall picture of the movie, the, like, I feel like the message of the movie. In Danish, maybe, like, the bald hairdresser, if that's the direct translation, is, like, has other meaning. Another kind of know? In, in Danish, mm -hmm. yeah. Is this a romantic comedy or a romance with some funny moments? I think definitely the latter. The entire premise um, was kind of dramatic. Yeah, I think it was, yeah, definitely funny moments, because I definitely laughed. I did too. Um, I agree. It's definitely a romance with some funny moments, not a romantic comedy. <laughs> At least how we normally view romantic comedies. Did color play an important role in this film for you? Oh, I think definitely. I, mean, I think that the costumes were very warm colors. And a lot of like a lot of these scenes of Italy and the sea were like cool colors. Yeah, I thought the use of yellow was really distinctive. Yellow, the lemons on the trees. Uh, she had a yellow dress at the end. Also, the sea then was so blue. So you have these like primary colors that just jump out at you, um, which were so striking to me. I definitely felt the, the use of color and it influenced the, the viewing of the film for me. I felt I really engaged by it, actually. They really made, a, made good use of wardrobe and scenery. I want to hire this cinematographer if I don't remember his name, but I was like, I'm going to call him if I'm ever making a movie. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it was really beautifully done. Did you find the fruit, the lemon, was used as a metaphor throughout the film? They're sour, but you can make lemonade sweet. and it's sweet. Yes. Or you can, lemons are used in every single type of flavor, you know? And With they kind of have to be like, they have to have like mix to be, to make like a better outcome. Right. Just kind of like, and a metaphor for like what you do and like, yeah. And you're with someone. Yeah, more. and a lemon was definitely used as like a thread throughout the film. It is rumored that an American remake of this film is in the works. Do you think this is necessary? No, I don't really think it's necessary, but a lot of people like Trump on remakes. And it probably wouldn't be as subtle, because it was pretty subtle. Yeah, yeah, I think it would be more heavy-handed. I thought the, the movie was beautiful on its own. Perhaps a remake could get appeal to a bigger audience, maybe? Reach more people? Maybe that's why it would be done. Did you like or dislike this film? I liked it. I was honestly like in the movie thinking, I'm gonna get this on DVD. <laughs> <laughs> first you really all, liked it. Yeah, first of all, it was like really pretty and it was just, it was like romantic and touching and you know, had, had like elements of dramatic parts and sadness, but no, I really liked it. I would definitely recommend it. Yeah, I agree. I really liked the film. Um, I felt that its strengths definitely were stronger than its weaknesses. Yes. Were there any standout or notable acting performances for you? Definitely the lead. Uh, she was great. I think she was, I think they were all really good, but I think she was the best one. She's just very like, she's worked with this director before. Mm -hmm. She's like really emotionally present and available, which is great. And I agree. You could, able, yeah. you could tell that she was right there in the moment in every scene. And she was like able to like hold back and then like put forward and she was like able to play like she was able to be like a mother and a person who was suffering from cancer and like a, a wife and someone who's like a little disillusioned and jaded. Like she was mm -hmm. able to like play all these different parts, which is like how people are. Right, and she didn't just she she played very like multifaceted um, emotional states. I felt that she could be um, upbeat, but also really really down. Yes, kind of simultaneously. It was really beautiful to watch. Um, definitely her, her performance was notable. And I think Pierce Brosnan, I, I mean, he was really good. He was really good. I thought it was solid. Mm -hmm. um, there wasn't anything in his performance that jumped out at me as being pr particularly notable, um, but I thought like overall it was a very solid performance. And it, but it was very, it was very Pierce Brosnan, you know what I mean? Like he, he was playing a role that was him it was his brand you know like which is great it's but it worked it was perfect yeah. right it just it just i wasn't surprised by anything mm -hmm. but i thought it was very solid yeah. what were your thoughts on the directing i thought it was good i think um it was nice that it, i mean i it, i mean i i wonder what it would have been like if it was directed by a, a male director instead of a female if it would have been any different um because i kind of had like a female touch in some ways it was like 
it was nice. It was, I think she was able to like work well with the actors. I haven't, I've seen, obviously I've seen Chris Brosnan and other stuff. I've seen the lead in at least one other thing. And I think she was like able to make, she, I think she had like an idea exactly what like wanted to happen. Mm -hmm. And I think that she was able to like work well with the actors and like make them like work well as an ensemble. Yeah. I, I, I'll piggyback off of that. I agree. I think she was able to get great performances out of her actors and that's like really a sign of a good director. Um, I also thought that the whole the composition of the movie was great, so kudos to her for that. It was definitely like a women's, kind of like by a woman for women, <laughs> um, and I can't speak from a man's perspective, but I just felt that it was very, something that every woman I know would enjoy watching, mm -hmm. um, and so definitely I think that is a reflection of having a woman as a director. What are your thoughts on the marketing campaign for this film? Did you I, find it to be effective? I honestly haven't even seen any marketing for this film. I hadn't either. I'm not sure what like what the trailer was attached to. And I like European films, but I haven't seen any advertising besides like after I knew I was doing this review. I hadn't seen any marketing for it, so I can't really speak for the marketing campaign. The only thing I can say is uh, that it was billed as a romantic comedy, and I feel like it doesn't really fit. So if someone was going expecting a typical romantic comedy, perhaps they'd be disappointed. Yeah. Did you notice any reaction from the audience around you? Um, just like a little chuckles here and there. There wasn't really that many people in the film, in the movie when I saw the film. Um, there was only a few, it was like later at night on a Thursday. So there were some chuckles though, like at funny parts, because mm -hmm. there were definitely parts that were like, it wasn't necessarily laugh out loud funny, but it was chuckles, like you definitely laughed. Yeah. Um, I noticed a few chuckles too. The, the theater wasn't too crowded when I was there either. I also noticed that pe people got choked up. Um, a couple women sitting in front of me were wiping their eyes Aww. at a few moments, and I, I was have, too. <laughs> I agree. I mean, I don't know if I actually, like, I don't know if my eyes watered or, like, I teared at all, but, like, there was so many touching moments, and that was one of the great things about the lead actress was because she was able to, like, make you feel for She could take you player. there. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. If you weren't on this panel, would you have gone to see this film? Honestly, I don't know because I didn't really hear of it, but I like films that, like, I really do like European films, and I like films that are like really pretty so had I I don't know it would have been hard to say because I don't know if anybody would have heard of it that's for me too I I didn't see the marketing campaign so I don't think I would have seen the film only because I didn't know it existed so I'm very glad that I got to do this panel because otherwise I would have missed out on a great movie exactly great and now I'd like to switch gears and introduce you to one of our new segments videos on demand picks of the week Here's Mimi. This is Video On Demand, this week's pick. I'm Mimi Spillane. We're here in historic Walker Park on a rainy Saturday in Staten Island. This is where some of the earliest tennis matches ever played in the United States were played. In fact, it's a Staten Island woman who is credited with bringing tennis to the United States and North America, Mary Ewing Atterbridge, who saw it played in Bermuda while she was on vacation. We thought it appropriate to talk about the woman who is largely credited with bringing tennis to America to talk about two other women who have had a profound effect on the sport and on society in general, Venus and Serena. This documentary doesn't advance their story so much. After all, they are among the most covered sports people on the planet. But the directors, Macon Baird and Michelle Major, had incredible access to them. So we do see a lot of pictures that at least I'd never seen before, and I'm thinking maybe you probably hadn't either. There were other interviews in the documentary with people like Bill Clinton, and uh, tennis great Billie Jean King and comedian Chris Rock, who all had interesting things to say. I do think, though, that it felt a little like window dressing, um, having them in there, but they did advance the piece a bit. The documentary does deal with the controversies of the sisters' lives, but mostly what comes through is the picture of two sisters who are incredibly close, who have survived being in the spotlight for over 20 years. It's on demand now. It's heading toward uh, some select theaters as of May 10th. And on my scale of four remotes, I'm giving it a three. Well, we've run out of time, but I'd like to thank you for your comments and thoughts, and it was a pleasure having you here with us today. Thank you. It was wonderful discussing love is all you need. I would also like to thank Leon for allowing us to shoot at the Two Boots Pizzeria. Today we were discussing Love is All You Need, written by Suzanne Beers and Anders Thomas Jensen, and directed by Suzanne Beers. Be sure to check out this and more on our website online at www.letstalkfilm.com, which is also available on your mobile devices. 
I'm today's host, Robin Ferrari. Until next time, keep watching and keep talking film.